Incoming transmission from the time scanner. Entertaining fellow time agents stationed in the field, working in secret to maintain the integrity of the space-time continuum. Broadcasting to you from Time Crystal Omega at the heat death of the universe. Here is your host, the Time Scanner. And this, 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 this is the infinite now. <laughs> The infinite monkey theorem states that if you have an infinite number of monkeys hitting keys at random on an infinite number of typewriters for an infinite duration of time, the monkeys will eventually type up the complete works of William Shakespeare. The problem with this is that it assumes the monkeys won't break the typewriters before they've typed so much as a single sonnet. <sighs> which... Which... <clears throat> which, when this experiment has been conducted in scientific settings, turns out to be the case. The Infinite Monkey Theorem... <sighs> the Infinite Monkey Theorem has been tested a number of times on a number of planets. Each time, the experiment has given us surprising results. Given an infinite amount of time, an infinite number of monkeys with an infinite number of typewriters will eventually break those typewriters and rearrange the broken typewriter pieces into a perfect recreation of Marcel Duchamp's masterpiece painting, The Bride Stripped Bare by Her Bachelors Even. Furthermore, the monkey primarily responsible for the painting in most of our studies, this was a female monkey, will pause to appreciate her work, and a male monkey who had nothing to do with the artwork will approach her to explain the meaning behind the work to her. <laughs> the male monkey will say, it's a crowning achievement of Dada's principles, and that <laughs> the forms symbolize cogs in an intricate machine of suffering fueled by the erotic desires exchanged between the machine at the top, representing the bride, and the nine machine pieces at the bottom half of the artwork, representing her bachelors. Using the cooing and grunts that comprise the monkey language, the male monkey will continue to praise the artist behind the work without knowing that, in fact, the very female that he's explaining all of this to was the monkey who constructed the artwork. The male monkey will repeatedly refer to the artist behind the masterpiece as he. He manages to create an alternate system of physics created by sexual attraction. <laughs> he really seems to understand the painful longing of seeing a beautiful female monkey from across a crowded room and the momentum that is created when that longing is acted upon. It was really quite brilliant of him, the male monkey will explain to the artist. <laughs> oh, um, and by the way, if you're not doing anything later after the experiment, would you like to come back to my cage with me? The scientist, he gave me a brand new enrichment swing after I chewed through the last one. In all the infinite monkey experiments, the male monkey's success rate at luring the female monkey back to his place using knowledge of the artwork she herself constructed is statistically indistinguishable from zero. This has been and will always be B B B B B The Infinite Now. <laughs> Transmission.
Mission complete. Hi, uh, my name is Richard, and I created the Infinite Now. I just wanted to say a few things to you after the show. Uh, usually, my friend Trilogy does the credits, but um, today I wanted to talk to you directly. I've been milling about the internet, making stuff under the name Time Scanner for uh, quite a while now, and I want to thank you all for listening to my podcast and reading my Twitter fiction, and for being my internet friend, etc. People say we're in an attention economy, but really it's more like a relationship economy. Cross-pollinating ideas and forming friendships is the point of sharing the stuff that we make on the internet. Or at least, um, you know, that's how I look at things. I've met some of the best friends of my life and amazing collaborators through making weird stuff under the name Time Scanner, so thank you. Also, if you'd like to hear more Infinite Now and enable us to get to some of the more you know, uh, ambitious things that we have in mind, consider contributing to our Patreon. Oh, hey, there's a Patreon now. Did I forget to mention that? Cool. It would mean the world to me and will keep me putting energy into this thing. Patron donations are the digital equivalent of you cheering me on and handing me a cup of Gatorade as I continue to run this creative marathon with no end in sight. I have some really cool plans for the infinite now, and I can't wait to explore some of this stuff with you guys. This episode was written and produced by me, Richard R. Penner. The voice of the Time Crystal interface was Esther Adair. As always, music was composed by Psychic Mold, Dr. Quandry, Alice Effect, and Matthew Schoendorf. You can find more of their music at psychicmold.bandcamp.com, drquandry.com, aliceeffect.bandcamp.com, and matthewschoendorf.com. In addition, there was also some music by Dana Boulay in this episode. Uh, Find more of her music at danaboulay.com. That's D-A-N-A-B-O-U-L-E.com. My logo was designed by the incredible Eva Giselle. See more of her work at evagiselle.com. Follow me on Twitter at Timescanner and check out our website. I will periodically be posting flash fiction and pictures of time travel artifacts and annotated transcripts of Time Scanner episodes on the website. The only place to find that is at theinfinitenow.org. So check back whenever you get a chance. Um, I feel like there was something else I was going to say. Oh, I know. Your very own personalized fortune for today is this. Good times are coming your way. I mean, you like end times, don't you? End times are coming your way. Use that foreknowledge wisely, and thanks for listening.